And the first system we need to talk about are of course connected system modules and they're the module for Azure Active Directory. First of all, we are supporting uh, Azure Active Directory uh, identities now and we uh, support two of them. One is of, of course the normal tenant and the other one are the B2C tenants. And what that at the end is, uh, like an identity manager in Azure Active Directory exists as well something like an identity. You can assign different accounts to that very specific identity that was not supported yet. We supported it now. There's a new table available, AAD user identity. And uh, there are as well new properties, of course. There is on the one hand side, the AAD user identity multi-value property. Um, it is a multi-value property because you can assign many. And then at the end, uh, there is then the AAD organization tenant type. And there you can now select between the normal tenant AAD or the B2C tenant. Together with that is of course uh, a new unsaved script for AAD users and an unsaving script for AD user's identity. Just remember, a lot of people are always um, uh, wondering why specific values exist by creation or updates or deletion of objects. Here the scripts are important. These are table scripts. Please have a look at these scripts if you want to see the standard implemented business logic. Then we have support for so-named administrative units. We can read them out of the system right now. We support for these administrative user units in Azure Active Directory, create, update, and remove, which means the CRUD operations. And uh, we support as well to assign users and groups to these administrative units. Therefore, exist new tables. You can see that here. They always start with AAD at the begin and end with the unit. And in the middle, you will then find where they are. Administrative is just the container. That means is the table for the elements itself. User in administrative is the assignment table for users to administrative units and group in administrative unit is then exactly the same for groups. Together with that and to allow provisioning, which is necessary by CRUD operations, you have two new processes. One is for insert, update and delete, as you easily can see. And the second one is to read out stuff. Very important to know these administrative units exists only if you do have a premium license for your tenant. If you don't have that, you will not have administrative units. Updates from Azure Active Directory for user accounts exists as well. In the past, we was not able to change email addresses. This is now possible as well. And we support now something which is called the user account for creation types. This is a field that allows you to figure out how a specific user was just moved into a system. And it supports right now the following different list items. There is a null, that is a regular school or work account. There is an invitation, that means an external account. There's a local account from a B2C tenant. Email verification, that means you're doing an email verification process or self-service sign up, which exactly describes what it is. Next are the updates for Azure Active Directory groups. Uh, we talked about it. We support now administrative roles and you can add uh, Azure Active Directory groups uh, to these specific roles. Supported operations are to create active, uh, Azure Active Directory groups and assign them to administrative roles, of course. Um, the group type must not be dynamic. It is what at the end it is. Group must be security enabled. This is what is necessary. Assignment read and write means here in that very specific case, um, you can assign that group uh, and you can remove that group. And uh, important is that it is not possible uh, to assign nested groups to these administration roles. Schema changes was necessary for that. You can see that uh, to the AAD group, which is the Azure Active Directory group, there is now an is assignable to role flag that allows at the end to identify if this is possible to assign it or not. And there's a new table available, which at the end represents this assignment, which is the AAD group in directory role. And of course, because the complete feature is dependent on the premium license, uh, assignments of these things are as well depending on that specific license. Azure groups are as well updated uh, in addition to what I was just talking about. And what you can see there is that it is now possible 
read rules for memberships, which are dynamically assigned uh, in Azure Active Directory um, to read out rules for dynamical assigned groups here in Azure Active Directory. Therefore, as you can see in the One Identity Manager schema, there is now a new property, which is the membership rule property. And additionally to that exists then a membership processing state. And you can now, as you see it on the right hand side, directly see that specific assignment rules from, Active Di from Azure Active Directory. And another object uh, one or the other might have looked at are the classification labels. We can now read them out from Azure. And we continue, of course, with the Microsoft Exchange Online Properties. And the first uh, property we like to talk about is the Classification Exchange Online Office 365 Groups. Um, they are supported now. In the past, this was not the case. Therefore, a new property was necessary, which is in the O3E Unified Group Table. As you can see it on the right hand side, there is a new property called classification. And uh, there is then a list of yeah, types of that specific exchange group, for example, an internal flag. If we look into the next slide, then we will see there is support for mailbox permission, send as and read and manage possible. This was not the case uh, before. And they are part of the synchronization workflow steps in the meantime. They, are, they get created but disabled per default and uh, therefore exists two new tables, of course. They start always with that O3E and then you will then see mailbox send as permissions and mailbox full access permissions. Um, disabled per default means they are off and if you activate them, they can then get set. Additionally to that exists the support for mailbox quotas. There are three mailbox quotas available, uh, a warning quota, a send quota and a send and receive quota. And like always in exchange, of course, if these quotas are reached, then um, yeah, you can you get a warning or you cannot send anymore or you will not send or receive any emails. The whole thing, of course, is then as well displayed on the mailbox object. You can see that on the right hand side uh, might look a little bit different because that was only a technical preview. And now let's talk about Microsoft Teams extensions. And that is quite easy. If you have a look at, you see support classification labels are now uh, as well included, like in some of the other objects, as we saw. They are now available. You can read them from Azure Active Directory and um, you can assign them at the Backing Exchange Online 365 group. Now let's talk about uh, Microsoft Active Directory, this time the on-prem version of the Active Directory. If you look at that, you will easily see the first and important thing what is implemented is it is now possible to move Active Directory users, that means accounts, across domain borders. This is something that was not possible before. It is possible with using the PowerShell commandlet. That's the only way to do it. And uh, you can start it in the manager, of course, there in the task section will be a specific task that will allow that. And to make it possible, there are new properties on RDS domain. First, of course, there is to implement a writ master that is necessary to start with that. And then you can just add a username and a password that allows cross domain to move these accounts around. The next thing here is then at the end, a new process, which will do the whole work. And that is then the process ADS, ADS account move to domain. You can see that directly on the left lower. Second feature in Active Directory is that we support for the local Active Directory all Active Directory versions from the 7 world, which means 7.5.2, 7.5.3 and 7.6 of active roles. Let's talk about uh, on-prem Microsoft Exchange. There was a new feature of Microsoft Exchange uh, available, uh, which is the room list. And we support now that very specific room list group type as well for local exchange. Therefore, new properties in the Exchange DL was necessary. You see there a recipient type then in the meantime, and then the recipient type details 
are a list of limited values again. And you can see here universal distribution group, that is standard, universal security group, standard, mail, not universal group was there, and a new type called room list. And now let's talk about the Google Workspace. First thing there is that we are now able to support synchronization of external email addresses. That was not possible at, uh, before. That means non-Google addresses can now be assigned to the groups in the Google Workspace, of course, as members, owners, or managers. And let's talk about uh, the SAP system. For the SAP system, first of all, we have parameters. They can also inherit through system roles right now. In the past, only business roles was able to do so. The system roles can do the same. Additionally, we have more revision filters available, uh, especially here for the synchronization of SAP HCM personal planning data. What that means is that at the end, you are able to filter the revision of main identities, work dates of employees and communication data. And as you all know, if you have a revision filters available, that speeds up the synchronization because the system knows if something has changed or not. Uh, from an overview perspective, you will see on the employee overview now, the client of the associated SAP user accounts. And you will see as well on the overview form for sub users, the client of assigned subgroups, roles or profiles. And that of course, if the CUA is used. Then let's talk about SharePoint. Very easy, SharePoint support uh, there. SharePoint supports now the SharePoint Server Subscription Edition. This is another version of the SharePoint Server. And to do so, uh, you can use the server version 2019 in the connection dialog. And now at the end, let's talk about our connected system module privileged account governance. The one or the other knows that as PAG which is at the end, the joint venture between Safeguard and the Identity Manager. And here, as you easily can see, a lot of new properties exist. Let's start on the left upper side. There is the enhanced synchronization project available. That means the synchronization takes care on the following properties. On the asset, there is an isRDP application host property additionally in the synchronization project. You see then on the PHG request policies, there are, of course, things like an object key for RDP app host accounts available now, an, an application alias and an application display name. And there is now a pack asset RDP app host property that could be assigned to that specific request policy. Um, if you then see the left side lower, there you will find the support for user must change password at next logon. That is a new property. This exists on the pack user. Pack users, of course, are other users able to do something in Safeguard. So on the right hand side, you see, uh, first of all, uh, the support for SSH keys. They exist um, in access requests, therefore a data extension was necessary on the asset. You can see a fingerprint on the policy again. You can see uh, allow session SSHE keys. You can as well see change the SSH keys after check-in and passphrase protect SSH keys, all the properties necessary to handle SSH keys on the request policy. You can as well see in a, a support of admin roles on groups. Their PHG user group was just extended with a new property admin roles. And last but not least, we are supporting now different password vaults at the user object. Therefore exists a new property allow personal accounts. Additionally to all of that exists a new report for PAG and that is the overview of privileged stuff access as you can see it on the right hand side. And that is available of course as a subscribable report and as a task in the manager. That means you can start to report directly there. And that's it for the connected system modules. We will now continue just with changes for the different specific features.